So growing up and even now, I watch a lot of anime and I watched a lot of anime and I was always obsessed with the idea of the main character going through training arcs and bettering themselves and ultimately achieving their goals and then, you know, having a happy married life or whatever. And this mindset, this idea of self, I think it's fakacy or self-confidence ended up like being instilled in me and actually helped me reach and launch several businesses uh, that ended up making five figures a month, some made four figures a month, and one even made six figures in a year. Which, I mean, if you make five figures in a month, you make six figures in a year. But by age 22, I made about $200,000. Um, and this past year, or like a, a year 2022, I was able to make about $107,000 in that one single year alone. And that was my last year of college. So a lot of this was while I was in college and being a college student. And, um, you know, it's it's pretty crazy how I've seen this trend. Oh, you know, this raw reality and people just talking to the camera, sharing their journey in this really authentic way. I have some notes right here, but I will try just, you know, I'll do this all in like one take, no cuts, nothing like that. Um, and one thing I noticed, everyone that, you know, has made this type of video or is talking about the online business that they were a part of, it's always SMA, drop shipping, or some other business that like everyone knows about. But what about the people who hustled in different ways, in ways that really no one else does, some of the in the cut niche ways? And that's really what got me to where I'm at because I never did SMA, I never did drop shipping. It was always something different. And one thing I realized, like, while, you know, I watched anime, and I watched these, these new characters and different anime, like Jujutsu Kaisen, Naruto, Attack on Titan, to succeed in online business, and this is, like, the reason that I think, I, I said before that I was able to get to where I'm at, is, like, a certain mindset that you need to have, and I think this is best reflected with this character named Gojo Satoru uh, for, from Jujutsu Kaisen. If you guys don't watch anime, it's fine. Uh, I, this will still make a lot of sense to you. But his, his mindset was this idea of he can do anything he sets his mind to. And this is something you hear all the time in school, right? Or you hear a celebrity say this, hey, if you don't give up and you stay determined, you can do it. It's not, it's not even that. It's the fact that you know that you are so confident in your abilities that, that if you put your mind to something, you full heartedly believe you'll be able to do it. And it's not like, you know, I'm gonna keep trying and maybe I can do it. No, it's, I have this mindset, right? I know my abilities. I know that I can achieve this if I just keep going. There's no what if, it's a certainty. And characters like Gojo Satra, who, who has this mindset and he thinks that he's gonna be, and he is the strongest character in the entire anime. No matter what, even when he's going against like a demon god, he thinks he's way better than him, levels above him, actually. And that, you know, I, I struggle with this even uh, like today, uh, even after I've made like multi six figures. It's like, yes, I guess I have this this self confidence that you know I'm gonna start this online business. I'm gonna start um, creating bots, and that's really what helped me make the money I did right i was creating bots and then reselling them bots for different websites bots for golf putters bots for sneakers bots for ps5s right um i made all these bots and i sold them to people i actually ended up getting a spot on times square back in new york city which is pretty crazy but now right now i feel like i can start any business and if i keep working at it i know that it's going to succeed and that's how self-confidence i have but at the same time I struggle with the idea of imposter syndrome, right? It's like, am I really someone who can talk about this? Am I really someone who can even talk to you guys? Yes, okay, maybe what well, I made two hundred thousand dollars at age twenty-two, but there's people who made a million dollars by my by age twenty-two. Right? Who am I to even share anything of value? Like, am I am I cool? Am I can I do this? Am I able to share this value? Do I have the credibility, the street cred? It's something that you always struggle with, but I feel like anyone who can relate to this video or just understand that if you want to be an online entrepreneur, if you want to start your online business, you got to have a certain mindset that is really going to propel you forward, right? And the best way to do that is just do the small things in life. Do like the small task. Every small task is a win, right? If you're a business, if you sent your 20 emails out today, that's a win. If you sent 50 emails out the next week, that's a win. So just tracking your progress, making like small, steady gains in an upward trajectory is really what's going to 
start making you believe in your own abilities, and then you will start having a high self-confidence. Um, now, I don't know how people who like sell courses and act like they're the they're the shit. They have these these rented out supercars and they're like, yeah, I'm an online guru. You know, I have, a, I have courses and like mentorship. And I don't know how they do it. And they're able to just make themselves look like the GOAT, right? And they are just able to fake people. I don't know how you can't keep it real. Like personally, for my whole brand is I've always kept it real. So it's just so weird seeing people being able to do this because... I feel like you need to put in at least a thousand hours into your craft before you can help others, right? Uh, I, I feel like if you if you haven't put in your thousand hours, you're in no place to teach anyone anything. Uh, like I said, I, I I have bots, right? So my, my online business is I started a YouTube channel where I upload SAT videos actually, and that started doing well. And then I start I launched my own SAT course. I, I launched like an SAT study sheet. Uh, I, I created my own tutoring company, which actually failed. The tutoring company did not end up doing that well, but the courses and the notes did. Right, and they succeeded high. And at that point, I thought that any SAT content I put out is gonna go somewhat viral or is gonna get a lot of views. And it did to a point, but then I started like getting complacent. I stopped trying to progress forward and then that channel channel started slowly dying out and now I'm getting back into it and it's hard to get the same views I did. But that was probably responsible for like the fifty thousand dollars of my, my net worth, maybe a little more than that. But then maybe a little more than that, yeah, maybe like seventy thousand. But then I transitioned into like creating bots and creating software automation, right? Uh, maybe you guys have seen AI automation agencies before all that even popped up. There's like the sneaker bots, the PS5 bots, right? Bots that people would use to buy hard to get items. Uh, like I said, I made a lot of them uh, and that made over six figures. Uh, even to this day right now, I'm making over 10K a month, uh, sometimes even 30K right? in a single month, not consistently, but sometimes 10 to 30K anywhere in that range in a month because of bots, right? People use them, I charge a monthly fee and they pay me. Uh, it's a pretty sustainable model. Uh, I do like it a lot. And this is something that's in the cut, right? People don't really know about this or they do this, don't really want to try it because it might seem a little complicated, which is fine. You know, uh, SAT business also might seem a little more complicated because a lot of other business in there. But that's where the idea of having that self-confidence, like you see these anime characters have, you know, they have the self-confidence that they can start the same business. As long as they have a little bit of an edge, they'll be able to succeed. And that's just something that I think you guys also need to uh, adapt. Um, now, to get this mindset and be able to put it into business, it doesn't just come overnight. You gotta have to put it and apply it in your life. Right? You gotta apply this mindset in your life, right? I used to be a very athletic kid growing up. I think I saw that pretty athletic, you know? But I was also a very big gamer. Uh, and I was like the kid who wanted to win unrelentlessly. And when it came to Call of Duty, I, me and my friends would have the biggest competitions among each other, saying, no, nah, I'm the best, no, I'm the best. And then I actually became known, like my friend and I actually became known as like the best Call of Duty players at our middle school. And I, we were, like, honestly, and at my middle school, was a lot of, you know, like the traditional popular jobs. We weren't that, we were like the nerds. But we got a lot of cred, the street cred, because of how good we were at the game. Like, we were monsters at Call of Duty. Right. And like, I remember every game I went into Call of Duty, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get 30 kills in a row. I'm going to get 30, 20 hits in a row. I'm going to, I'm going to drop so many streaks. Every game I went into, I believe that. And now as like an adult, when I play a sport, every game I go into, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to win this sport. I'm going to win this match. No matter what happens, I'm going to win this match. And sometimes I lose, but most of the times I do actually end up winning. And that's simply because of that, that high self-confidence you have in yourself, not arrogance, but high self-confidence because you know your abilities and you know you have what it takes to reach the end point. So why would you ever believe otherwise? Now, one thing I want to say uh, is that uh, I actually started with stocks, right? So my first online business, my first online venture failed. It was me trading stocks. I thought I was going to be rich. I thought I was like Timothy Sykes, right? Or like some the, the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, I asked my dad for like $1,500. It failed. Um, and I was like, dang, like <laughs> there goes that, right? Within the ST and the bots came up and that really became something that was super like excellent, super powerful. Um, and then th this question came up, right? Cause a lot of this, like I said, was while I was in college. So, uh, man, this video, this video might be a little bit all over the place, but I remember when I was in college, uh, there's this whole discussion, right? You can call, I went to a big party school, University of Maryland. It's like a really big party school. It's really good at computer science, which I majored in but it's the party vibes are insane, 
right? So at that point, there was like a, there's like a theme, right? Uh, enjoying college life versus hustling. Can you do both? Should you do one or the other? You don't want to trade your college years for hustling, but some people say you want to hustle. So after college, you're set for life. You don't have to worry about you know a full nine to five job. The reality is I have a nine to five job right now. And I was also the kid who said, you know what, I'm not ever working nine to five, ever. I'm gonna make so much money in college that when I graduate, psh, nine to five, I won't even have to think about it. But even though I made like multi six figures in college, I I'm still doing a nine to five job. Maybe it's not for the money, but it's for the experience. Like being able to say, hey, you know what, I was a part of corporate America, I got that experience. And the people you meet is very invaluable. And that can actually help you with your personal business. You can meet very cool, smart people in corporate America. And you can make connections, right? And connections, sometimes it's not about, you know, what you know, it's about who you know. So I, I do recommend, you know, still checking out a nine to five, at least trying it out. I know it's not for everyone, but I remember in college, like I will say I'm a semi introvert. Maybe I'm like a, I am INFJ on the personality type, so I'm more introverted, but I have some extroverted uh, uh, qualities, right? So I wanted to party. I wanted to meet people, you know, do the whole college life but I also wanted to make a lot of money and I, I remember I would always have this battle in my head, even if there's like a party, right? I was like, yo, should I just stay in and, and, and like do some work or should I go party, right? Should I make a new landing page or should I go to this this DC event, right? Where all my friends are going, it's be a blast. Uh, nine times out of 10, I would go to the party. And you guys might be like, whoa, that, you know, that's not hustler mentality. But it was like, I didn't want to trade fun Right, well, it's like the major fun things in college, for just to grind, which which some people might look down upon, but I even even me, right? When I saw other people partying every day, like there's people who would party like every single weekend, I would actually look down upon them, which was a really bad thing. But the reason I look down upon them is because I would be like, um, they are not doing anything to help them after college. I guess, I guess they're going to classes. They're setting, them up for nine, they're setting themselves up for the nine to five, but the nine to five is enough money to buy a Lamborghini. It's not enough money to buy a Ferrari. It's not enough money to retire your parents, or at least not initially, right? But then I was like, yo, these people are just wasting their time by constantly partying. Yes, you party semi every weekend, right? Or like maybe bi-weekly, but you don't got party every single like weekend. Right? People were doing that. And I was like, yo, there's just no way. But then I also realized these people are creating moments right? They're creating moments that they'll always remember. So yes, while I'm making a bunch of money, they're making moments that will remember. I'm not going to remember that landing page I created. I'm not going to remember that email I sent, right? But I will remember that the blast I had at that party. So that's the reason why I ended up going to the parties instead of like, you know, uh, making that money. Uh, and maybe if I had hustled mo like nine times out of 10, I chose to stay home and make that landing page, send those emails. Maybe my net worth would be like close to a million dollars right now. But that's something I sacrificed, something I was okay with sacrificing, right? And in anime, um, in anime, they would probably not do that. But what's the point of making money just to make money, right? Like, there's no, there no point in that. Like, if you're making money just to make money, what's your, like, what does that do for you? I think that uh, anyone starting a business, you should always remember your reason. Like, what's your reason for starting a business, right? Um, make sure to add that reason, right, in your mind, always... Uh, change that reason a little bit, like, like modify. I don't like change the entire reason, but modify it in case like something else in life happens, right? Maybe it's like to retire your mom, then your dad struggling, you're like, you want to also retire your dad, right? Uh, just change the reason if needed and always remember the big goal, okay? You want to start making $10,000 a month, then 30000 and then when you start making like big money or money that's life-changing to you, you start to forget your goal, you start to forget your reason. Always keep that in mind, always refer back to it, it'll help you stay humble, it'll help you stay on the ground, and it will just keep you chill. Like it'll make sure that you're on the right track, right? Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably trying to figure out how to, you know, make some good money. If I figure out how to even hustle or start your first or second or third online business, or you're like, man, this guy's yapping, but I like to hear it, right? So in anime, you know, there's like these training arcs. You see every main character go through them. Um, the training arc is like you isolate yourself, you, you don't talk to anyone, you just train, 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 and you come back like two years later, a new man, a new person, super strong. That's a really cool concept that I think you can apply in the real world. Now, it's called monk mode, right? People call it monk mode. Um, I just call it training arcs, but you don't have to isolate yourself completely. You can still talk to your friends, talk to people. But it's the idea of being like, to keeping your energy to yourself, 
right? And that's really hard to do in college. And that, I think that's something I struggle with as well, right? Keeping all your energy to yourself is a very powerful thing. And 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 animes, that's the whole what the training arc is for. Just you're expending energy for yourself only, and otherwise you're not letting anyone else take any of your energy, right? So have your training arc. And, and one thing to keep in mind as you're training is there's this concept of luck that is inevitable. No matter what business you go in, luck is involved. Right now, luck isn't just blind, you know, the world helping you out. It's more of the idea of preparation meets opportunity. Now, yes, I'm very lucky that one day the owner of the New York City Times Square Tower reached out to me, asking me to make them a bot. But because I had that skill set of, you know, making bots very well, I was able to service him and actually give him a bot that did exactly what he wanted. And as a result, like I said, I was able to get on Times Square Tower, which is the craziest thing, right? Um, people come to me from random sites, for random sites, saying, hey, can you make a bot for this? Can you make a bot for this? Some people asking me to teach them. And this is over the years. So just recently, I launched a mentorship site where I uh, taught people how to make bots. And in the first month, it made $12,000, right? which was insane but that wasn't lucky it was because of years of building credibility in the bot developer space that people were like this guy knows what he's talking about right i want to be a part of his three thousand dollar mentorship because i'm gonna learn i know i'm gonna have an roi on this so i'm going to participate right so that's not luck or it is luck but it's because i have a skill set that i can make the most of the opportunity i presented by the universe or by god or whatever you want to think and make sure you have god in your heart because that's really what's going to propel you forward um, now you don't need to be a silver spoon, right? Obviously if you're a silver spoon, you, I guess you were born lucky, right? But you don't need to be a silver spoon. You just gotta, you gotta get your training arc ready, right? And so what can you do to even like get started if you want to start an online business or anything? Well, if you have a skill and you have expertise in something, you can make a course or community powered by your skill, right? Your skill will be the one that is being like uh, taught or shown in the community and people will pay you to learn it because everyone wants to make money nowadays, right? Um, and to try and start online businesses. If you don't have that skill, then don't be a fake guru. Instead, learn a high value skill like, like marketing or uh, coding, creating bots, right? AI automation, these high value skills that you can use at very high demand, low supply, and that help mon people make money or reach their goals because that's what they'll pay you for. If they know they're making $10,000 a month by learning the skill, they'll pay you $3,000 like with these, right? Because it's an instant ROI in their head. Now, a mentee of mine actually just became uh, a bot dev recently, right? He just finished like the mentorship and he made $400 off his first bot contract, which isn't life changing, but uh, it was a client who asked him to make a Stanley Cup bot. It's like these water, it's like these water bottles. For, I don't white girls have them all the time. I don't know. But um, he was able to service that client and give them a $400 bot and make instant money within a day just because he now had this high value bot dev skill. Right now, this requires some coding and you might not know how to code, but you can easily learn how to code. A bunch of free resources out there. But let's say you don't want to even go into it. There's simpler th skills out there, right? There's also harder ones, but you can try what's right for you, whether it be a simpler skill or a harder skill. Just remember the reason you, you, you as you grow, like as you grow, remember the reason you're doing all this, the reason you want to make money. Um, so don't just learn the skill just to make money. Try to have like a bigger reason right and that skill is going to help you reach that reason like fulfill that reason like usually like naruto if you watch that, that anime if you don't you should right his reason was to become okage that's why he learned all these different techniques right that made him strong enough to eventually become okage and get that recognition get that like that title so um you know every main character of an anime goes through ups and downs but they keep going which is why they end up on top and they have that strong confidence that strong mindset that they can do virtually anything they want to so that's what you guys want to do uh, so start your training arc today right after watching this video start your training arc and i want to see you guys become the best version of yourself 